Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. Uh, I want to just start off by saying that uh, forgive my the quality of my voice if you can hear it. I'm I got a cold, and I'm uh, recovering from that. But I I wanted to throughout this episode uh, sooner rather than later. But first, let me just uh, apologize first of all to uh, any longtime listeners or or uh, any 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 listener really who <laughs> may have noticed that I haven't had an episode in. Uh, about a month. Actually, it'll be over a month by the time by the time that I post this. And uh, part of that was just after I did the episode with Travis. Uh, I was so exhausted uh, about our talk about the our top five uh, favorite magic characters that I just I just couldn't muster up the energy to do another episode. No, 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 no. That's that's not it at all. It's just that. Well, um, about a week after. We had that talk. There was the election, and quite honestly, I just didn't feel like I don't know. I didn't. I didn't feel like I could have any fun, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I don't know. I was just kind of down in the dumps about some things regarding the election, and I just didn't feel like it. And then, then of course, there was the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I tried to. I actually did try to do a. I was going to do a, a, this episode earlier uh, before the holiday uh, but uh, just uh, just got away from me and I, I couldn't get to it until now and so as I record this this is November 30th Wednesday November 30th so I hope you had a, a great new comics Wednesday um, uh, on that date I'm looking forward to getting Next week, when I get my comics from DCBS, uh, I'm looking forward to reading that new talent showcase issue. And I know that a lot of people on Twitter on this day were were talking um, very favorably about the Batman annual that came out. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, and it's really a light week for me in terms of the comics I'm getting uh, for the week of number, November 30th, which is kind of weird, but... Uh, I guess it kind of makes sense because I also just did kind of did a a look at uh, well it's numbers of uh, regarding my collection and and buying habits and stuff um, just just because I, I like that kind of stuff every once in a while and and towards the end of the year I kind of take stock in those things about what I've what I've done where I've been and where I'm going and I I noticed today that as I was looking at that stuff that. I have bought less than half of the amount of comics this year in 2016 so far uh, than I did in 2013, which is the, the the top year in terms of the number of of issues that I bought in a year. So I just thought that was an interesting point. And so I guess I'm buying fewer comics right now. Uh uh, that that you know that only counts like the new stuff I'm getting throughout the year. It's not not counting all of the back issues that I'm also that I'm also buying. In fact, I just put in an, an order uh, with uh, Midtown Comics because they had a, a uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, whatever holiday sale uh, where some issues were seventy five percent off. And so I I got a few of those and got some things that are, have been on my wish list for a while, and I was kind of surprised to find some of those. So that's really cool. Uh, so anyway, that's that's I guess that's why I haven't, in part, why I haven't been uh, or why I haven't released an episode. Uh, like I said, there was there was a comic that came out that really got me got the the old uh, uh, podcasting juices flowing. Well, that sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? Um, but uh, but I wanted to talk about this particular comic uh, this episode and. Uh, the next episode I plan to, it, it will, I plan to, it, I plan that it will be, <laughs> I plan to have a conversation with someone, um, about some indie comics that we are reading. And so, uh, if it, if it all works out, Damien sleepy reader, six, six, six will be joining me to discuss that. And I have some other things that I hope to get out in December as well. Normally I, I tend to take November or sorry, December off. It just kind of happens that way because of the holidays and everything that goes on relating to to Christmas and New Year's. 
And so I generally take, like I said, take December off, but uh, this year it looks like it was November instead. And I don't want to have two months go by where I release only one episode. So um, there'll be another episode definitely uh, coming in December. And I'm hoping to uh, wrangle Travis to to join me on, a, on another discussion. He he doesn't know this yet. So if he's listening to this, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a surprise. Uh, anyway, but first, before I get to the the comic that I want to talk about, which is Nightwing number nine from the DC Rebirth line, uh, first I wanted to just throw out some feedback I got relating to the last couple episodes. And so I need to I need to find that. Hold on, while, while I'm looking at my phone. Uh, first up is is Damien Sleepy Reader, who uh, in regards to the Legion episode, the Legion Spotlight episode that I did with Peter Rios. He said uh, that he, uh, Damien was amazed at how gripping a two and a half hour discussion of the Legion could be. I wanted more smiley face. So um, thank you, Damien. I, I appreciate that. Uh, as I replied to him, I used to complain about podcasts that were three plus hours long. There, There's a, there's a, uh, a famous DC centric podcast out there um, that I just stopped listening to years ago. Not because I didn't like the topics, not because I didn't like the hosts, but because uh, they were just too long. And and I I quickly realized after that that I was putting out episodes that were two, two and a half, three hours. And in fact, this year I had, I think it was a four plus hour episode with episode 100. So who am I to complain, right? Uh, let's see here. So that was the episode about the Legion. I have a couple things about the last episode, which was, like I said, the top five magic characters. So let me pull that up. Okay, this is from, I believe his name is Mark from from the uh, I'm the Gun podcast and blog. And, and I apologize if you're not if if your name is something other than Mark, Mister I'm the Gun, because I I just looked it up and now I can't remember. As I'm recording. Anyway, uh, so he said, can I have a go at this? So number five, his number five was Spectre. Uh, number four is Harry Potter. I mean, Tim Hunter. Number three, Dr. 13 and and uh, the I'm the Gun podcast uh, for Halloween did a spotlight on that character, Dr. 13. That was a lot of fun to listen to. And he has here as number 1B and number 1A. So uh, I guess these two characters, he has a hard time uh, putting as uh, number two and number one, but we'll go with this and uh, Doctor Fate, which was my one of my characters that I chose. I think maybe even <laughs> see it's only been a month and I can't remember, can't even remember what my what my number one character was. Anyway, uh, Doctor Fate and his his other number one is John Constantine or Constantine if you prefer, which of course was Travis's number one. So I appreciate that feedback. And uh, people should go listen to I'm the Gun. And okay, so there's that. And then one more. Let me get to that. This is from Peter Rios, an email that uh, Peter sent me. If I can find it. Ah, here we go. Okay, so Peter said he enjoyed the latest episode and he wanted to throw out his list. Uh, uh, one of which was Baron Winters from the from the Night Force series uh, from DC Comics. This is this was written by Marv Wolfman. I think it was during the time he was doing New Teen, New Teen Titans. Anyway, uh, Peter says that Baron Winters uh, is an obscure and mysterious figure in the vein of Hellblazer, where you don't really know if he has powers or not, but his aloof presence and his home, which can travel through time add to his character, which I did not know that about his, his, his domicile. So that, that really intrigues me. Uh, another cool choice that uh, Peter throws out here, Black, uh, Black Briar Thorn from DC. Um, it says here, introduced in DC Comics presents issue with Superman and the Demon and Lana Lang and her dad and drawn by Joe Kubert. I remember that issue. I don't think I've read it, but I, I do remember seeing it uh, when it first came out and also, you know, just just because I have an interest in in the DC Comics Presents line. Uh, later showed up in the Jeff Johns JSA run. I do remember that. Uh, I do remember reading that. Another obscure character with potential for a rich history. Also a great design, which I, I have to agree with Peter on that. Uh, he chose Enchantress for another one for Marvel. I like both the DC and Marvel version, but the Marvel version wins out. 
from Secret Wars to Simonson's Thor, always a fun character that isn't all good or bad. Wish more was done with her. Uh, also from Marvel, Magic, Magic with a K, she's feisty, powerful, surprisingly more level-headed than most X-Men. Uh, send your hate mail to peter at the daily uh I, I i i really can't comment on that because i i don't read a lot of x-men or have not read a lot of x-men uh, but i always like magic uh she also has a twisted origin she should have a higher place in marvel's magic pantheon yeah i i happen to agree with that uh based on what i know and finally to no surprise to me Peter chose as as one of his top five Amethyst from DC, as he says here, no brainer. One of the earliest magic characters that I read, especially from her first appearance, such a great concept with a large world of potential, with a large world of potential characters and stories. Love the Zodiac angle, which I did not realize was part of this, how it fits in with the DC universe and her supporting cast. She's my girl. So thank you, Peter, for that feedback. I really appreciate that. And if I missed anybody, I apologize. I, I when I went looking for feedback on Twitter, I I, th- I thought I caught it all, but I'm, I was thinking maybe that I, I missed at least one. So if you're that one, I apologize. If there's been more, I also apologize. Uh, if if I go back through uh, for for a future episode and find some more feedback about either of those episodes or anything else for that matter, I will I will include that on, on some future episodes. So. Uh, let's get right to it before my voice fails me. And before I do, I'm going to take a quick drink. And then I have to decide if I'm going to cut this out or not. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, Nightwing number nine. So, as as you may know, uh, and if you don't, if you're joining me for the first time, hi, welcome. Uh, but if, if you have been listening to the podcast for a while, uh, you know that uh, Nightwing, Dick Grayson, is one of my f- very favorite characters in comics, period. And so I always always pick up um, uh, whatever book that Dick Grayson is headlining in. I don't always stick with it, but uh, I definitely try it out. And here we are with the Rebirth version of Nightwing. This is issue number nine, as I said. And I just really liked a lot of the things about this issue, uh, the, so much so that I wanted to to go through this. And I, I haven't done this for a single comic in a while. I think the last one was was a Batman Incorporated issue, I think. The one where Damian Wayne died, where he was killed by his, his genetic brother, uh, genetically modified brother, Frankenstein's monster brother, whatever whatever it is. Anyway, um, so here we are with with Nightwing, and so this issue opens up with what with what we find out very quickly is a dream sequence, uh, where Dick is fighting with some of his Titans buddies, Wally, uh, Roy, and Donna. You know the original, well, sort of the original Titans crew. But the first thing that that I noticed in this uh, this the the second panel, which which is the first image panel, because the first panel is just some some uh, dialogue. Uh, uh, at the top, uh, but but Dick's smiling in this, and and I always like like to see Dick Grayson smiling. You know that that daredevil quality of his nature, uh, the happy go lucky uh, circus kid. That part of him come out more. I, I like to see that. And so he's smiling. Uh, he smiles quite a lot in this issue, which I think is a big part of why I really wanted to talk about this. So they're having this little mini team up. Uh, going up against these these robots, these uh, they look like French beret wearing robots. <laughs> That's just how I see it. But um, if you if you if you read this issue and you you uh, disagree with my description, please let me know. Uh, anyway, you know, they're going after um, the, the bad guy who's running off with he, he's he's as as Dick says, and I'm guessing it's the. It's the, the someone who sent these 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 uh, robots uh, is the someone in a big cape making like a cockroach when the lights go on, which is you know interesting because we're talking about a dream and we're talking there, and there's some dark qualities to this narrative that I'll get to. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, oh, I should I guess I should, I should point out this is this is by this the, the title of this issue is called Fighting Destiny. It's written by Tim Seeley. Marcio Takara is the artist with Marcelo uh, Maiolo doing the colors, Carlos Mangual doing the letters. Uh, so, where, where was I? 
Oh yeah, so they're running off this this uh, the 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 bad guy behind this. Uh, Dick says, "Flash, Arsenal, Donna, follow me." And Donna says, "Excuse me, Nightwing, but I don't think you can boss us around." And Roy says, "This isn't official Titans business. This is more like a four way team up." Okay, so really, what I what I wanted to point out here, I thought it was interesting, and it really has nothing to do <laughs> with with uh, the, the 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 plot of the story. But he calls Flash and Arsenal by their code names. But Donna is Donna. And and you could take that a couple different ways. One is that he feels very close to Donna. Uh, they have almost like a brother-sister relationship, or at least they have in the past. And so, you know, maybe I'm just throwing my continuity onto this. And so that's what that's where my brain goes. But at the same time, I thought it was odd. And maybe it's because Donna doesn't really have a code name in this New 52 slash Rebirth timeline um continuity uh, but it but it stood out to me and and i'll take my my uh the 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 reason i think is is better which is that he feels closer to donna than he does perhaps wally and and roy anyway they go in and you, you they confront the guy he looks kind of like a, a skeleton with some with some skin on top of it he's got a, a, a cloak red eyes and his chest his chest is open like he's like 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 someone's pulled open his chest from the middle part of his chest and just pulled it open and there's this glory red thing inside and he looked familiar to me i didn't quite get it um turns out this is dr destiny we find that out in a few pages it's dr destiny and i i think maybe we've seen dr destiny in what justice league dark that's the last thing that i can recall and i might be misremembering that but Anyway, um, the, there's some dream, there's some things about dreams uh, here, and and a dream is real to the sleeper. At which point, the those robots that that the team was fighting before uh, teleport in behind uh, the, the the heroes, and Donna, Roy, and Wally get uh, run through by by these swords or sword like things from the robots. Um, uh, that wakes up. Dick, it says Titan's Loft in Gotham City, which I didn't, I'm reading. I'm reading the book Titans, and I don't know that they have a have a, a a base of operations yet. So this might be a little a little forward in time from where I'm at in that book, unless I'm again misremembering. But anyway, he's there. He's he has a nightmare. Um, he said, "Ever since I put on the Nightwing tights." Ever since I put the Nightwing tights back on, my life has been a series of bad dreams. Raptor, the Monster Men, Clark dying, Tim, dot, dot, dot. Every waking, or every moment making me question who I am and what I do. I took the name Nightwing from a story Superman told me. The Nightwing, an ancient god eternally reborn to start anew. And then he finishes, if you go to sleep in one life, can you wake up as someone else? And that, of course, sets up the, the thrust of this issue. A couple things here. Uh, you mentioned specifically Clark dying. So that's, that's the new 52 version of Superman who, who died, uh, right before rebirth. And, and there's a panel when he's talking about that, there's a panel there where he, he looks out his bedroom door and looks down below it at Titan's loft. And while he's there playing pool by himself with Donna looking on, I don't see, Oh, I guess, no, I guess Roy's there too. But, but, uh, Wally is, is, uh, is, uh, I guess, cleaning up at, at, at the pool table. Anyway, um, Dick goes, tries to go, he lays back down and tries to go back to sleep and he gets a visitor outside his window and it's Superman who says, we need to talk. Uh, an hour later, they're at the fort, they're at the, the fortress of solitude, which I thought was interesting. So they, so Seeley and company, uh, totally skip over the, 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 uh, the pleasantries between the two characters and, and skip right to, <laughs> you know, getting into the plot, uh, which, which I forgive, but I, I, part of me really wished to have, have, um, witnessed that conversation, uh, and, and, and in part, in large part, because Superman and Dick Grayson teaming up has always been one of my very favorite things in DC comics. There's a few DC comics presents where Dick and Superman, um, teamed up, you know, the world's finest comics. They've, they've done things over the years in various other titles, but it's always a special treat for me whenever these two get together, especially because, as as I read, um, Nightwing in the 
well, what are, the post-crisis continuity, I think. Was that post-crisis? I can't remember now. Maybe it wasn't. When did Night, When did Dick Grayson become Nightwing? What year was that? I want to say 84, so that was pre, pre-crisis. Anyway, uh, Nightwing... So Dick Grayson took took the name Nightwing because, like he said, and like I read, uh, because of something that Superman told him about. And and I think in the New 52, I, I didn't get the sense that that these two were close, that they were friends, like like they were in previous incarnations of the DC Universe. And so I always kind of missed that. Um, and so I was very pleased to see uh, these two get together here in this issue and come to find out that... Uh, not only uh not only did did the new 52 version of superman and dick grayson know each other they apparently were were close enough that superman entrusted him uh dick entrusted dick with his his secret identity uh anyway so so superman has brought nightwing to uh to his fortress because there, there is a strange situation that he's been monitoring, and because the Justice League hasn't made up their minds about whether to trust me, Batman especially, he just decided to come directly to Dick to help solve the problem. Uh, Dick replies, "You aren't the Superman I know, knew, but he was a good friend of mine." So there you go. There, he, we do get that acknowledgement, even though we may not have ever seen it. You know, I haven't read every New Fifty Two comic, so it's possible that I've missed something. Um, uh, and Dick continues, you know what? I'm too tired to pretend I understand this alternate universe stuff. So apparently, uh, either, either Bruce has told Dick about this new Superman and what that means, or that was the conversation that, that the two had before that we did not get to witness. Uh, Superman replies, though, this world is very different than the earth I came from. There are similarities echoes almost. And and that's an echo in, in itself because destiny says something about echoes in the dream sequence. But an echo is the true sound to one who hasn't heard the source. And I think, I think echo, the, just that word and the idea comes up later in, in the issue. Uh, repeated elements reconfigured in new ways, Superman says. So I've been preemptively monitoring for known threats from my world in case they potentially show up in some variation on this earth. And the panel shows, um, I presume these are holograms because Dick Grayson is reacting to these as opposed to, you know, just sort some sort of, uh, this is a, this is a look inside Superman's head of what he's thinking about. What we see here though, is Superboy prime, uh, doomsday. And I can't remember the, the name of this, the, the living sun, uh, which I thought had appeared in the new in in the the Grant Morrison Action Comics run after New Fifty Two started, and then there's another and I uh, but I don't remember the the name of that Living Sun. Um, uh, and then there's another, this other character that looks kind of like Malekith actually to me. I don't know who that is. I feel like I should know who that is, but I don't. So if you know who that is, let me know. Anyway, um. Superman explains that he detected uh, two faint energy signatures associated with an artifact called the, I'm going to try this, Materio Opticon, uh, to, which, to which Dick says, the Materia, yeah, but what? <laughs> anyway, I, I think some of the responses that, that, that Dick has to some of what Superman is telling him is kind of, kind of uncharacteristic, but, but it's, you know, it's funny and it's, it's, it's not too out you know, it's not way out there that I, I, that I just can't accept it. But like that was, that does just doesn't sound like Dick to me. It sounds more like Roy actually. Regardless, uh, before I go on though, there's something that I wanted to mention. So I, the, the, the fact that Superman's mon- preemptively, preemptively monitoring for known threats. Now that's something that's come up in, I think it's the Superman title, um, in relation to, uh, what's Metallo. No, is it Metallo? I think so. Anyway, um, that's anyway that's come up <laughs> in in the Superman book, and and I, there I even wanted more of that idea of Superman preemptively going out and stopping threats, or at least at least um, checking into them. Now that can't be the whole comic, right? But but I like that they they touch on this, and and I'd like to see more of that. I guess is what I'm saying. Anyway, 
And in, in response to uh, Dick's confusion about the material Opticon, Superman explains it was a weapon used by a man named Dr. Destiny to create reality from the fabric of dreams. And there's a there's a there's the image of, doc, of uh, Dr. Destiny that that this Superman knows. And, and we're, you know, longtime readers of DC Comics is more familiar. You know, it's the the skull with 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 a hood and the more traditional looking supervillain costume as opposed to the to the uh, grotesquerie that is Dr. Destiny in, in this universe. Uh, Dick says, your world's version is significantly less disturbing looking than the guy I saw. Uh, and Superman says, a common thread I've noticed. Yes, it, uh, it's, it's a really pertinent observation in regards to the New 52 slash Rebirth uh, in the DCU. So something that I've often thought of too. And, you know, many people have, have talked about this ad nauseum, so I won't go any more into it. I just, I, I find it funny that we we're still getting those reactions and now it's, it's sort of meta in the comics themselves. Anyway. So, um, Dick asks, asks Superman, why is, why is destiny doing this to him? And, and Superman says, I don't know yet, but the Dick Grayson of my world was one of my oldest friends. Again, there's that 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 thread of friendship, and I'm, I just love hearing that. We shared echoes, there's that word again, of the relationship you shared with this world's Clark. I want to help. Which is so Superman of him. <laughs> and I love it. So uh, uh, Superman has this this device. Um, do, 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 what is he, does he call it? Yeah, he just says this device. So this device will tether his mind and Dick's mind, allowing allowing Superman to follow him and provide assistance in this dream. And and I know uh, I think I think Damien, because um, I, I put out on Twitter how much I was enjoying certain aspects of this book already. Uh, so that was a precursor to to this episode. But um, uh, Damien said something about the the, the device, and, and my response to that was that I, I had a kind of a Silver Age feel to it, you know, just, oh, here's this dream device. Here, I'll just hook you up, and we'll go or prancing around in your dreams. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's a really comic book thing to me, and I love it. Uh, Dick, again, so, uh, so echoes again, so word echoes, uh, rephrasings of, of the same thing. Uh, again, Dick says he, he's tired. He's tired of things falling apart. Tired of not being able to to escape to a better place. If you think you might be able to help me help me with these nightmares, I'm willing to risk that you're an evil clone from a dark future or whatever. <laughs> so Dick has just kind of reached his limit here, and he's just willing to go along with it. Again, that kind of strikes me as uncharacteristic of him. But at the same time, Dick is also willing to jump into the fray without a fully formed plan. And so I, again, I can see this, but at the same time, it kind of rubbed me wrong, but he's, he's willing to go with it. He's willing to trust the Superman to a certain point. And that gets, um, furthered by the end of this issue. So, so that, that feeling of trust is starting to build here between these two characters, which uh, again, I love, uh, Superman says you're, he pauses grimmer than the dick i knew but at least you still got your sense of humor and so i mentioned that that dick grayson was smiling at the beginning of this issue and that will come back to that too uh and then so then nightwing is gonna uh, gonna go to sleep he says good night and superman says and this this get this line get uh gave me all the feels too superman says you can call me clark uh so now we are in nightwing's dreamscape and the first thing, the first scene that we see is Helena, um, who was uh, a matron um, in the Grayson series and is now Huntress in Batgirl and the Birds of Prey and Agent 37, which was also from the Grayson series. They're there playing beach volleyball with, with Nightwing and Nightwing serves the ball and Destiny shows up and swallows the ball in, in his chest and then the, the robots show up and slaughter Agent 37 and Helena. Dick can't do anything. He um, He's, for some reason, in this dreamscape, maybe because of the presence of Superman uh, or, or the fact that uh, Dick himself is getting weaker overall, this the whole energy thing. 
Um, he's unable to physically manifest enough to fight against uh, these robots. Yeah, so basically Dr. Destiny gets fed with more energy every time a, a dream construct of Dix is killed. So uh, Superman recommends that they need to get on firmer ground. You're feeling helpless and immaterial out of your element and your dream selves are responding to those feelings. He says, I can help. I need you. I need to take you somewhere you feel comfortable, safe, somewhere you're in control. And so they, they appear uh, on top of this building in, in a city. And uh, Dick says, I, uh, where are we? I know every rooftop in Gotham, and this isn't one of them. And Superman says, um, this is where you feel safe. Not you, you, the Nightwing of my world. When he left Gotham, he became the hero of a city called Bloodhaven. He made it his own. It was the first thing I thought of, which is an interesting, if not, a great bit of logic now because let me before i explain because dick's not been to bloodhaven he's not he's and he even says this in here i've never been here but it looks like i invited friends and that's when we see some other characters i'll get to that in a second so night this nightwing has never been to bloodhaven and yet superman believes that this is a uh, a place that would provide dick with with uh safety with with comfort and so, like I said, that that's not logical, right? But this is a dream sequence. Dream logic doesn't have to make sense, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so so Dick looks down below and he sees Batman on this dock, and he, who Batman is witnessing Robin sparring against Batgirl, and then the robots come again. Uh, and uh, now, however, Dick is able to to fight the robots. So apparently just showing up in this dreamscape of, of Bloodhaven is enough to help him uh, battle them. Let's see here. Uh, Superman comes to the realization, and I, I wish, I kind of wish that uh, it wasn't Superman who was the impetus of this, but but Dick himself, but regardless, uh, he says, that's it. That's what, that's what they're feeding destiny. Your anxieties about your friend's vulnerabilities. He's exploiting your connections, your knowledge, your compassion, your fear that you won't be able to save the people you love, which is which is the underlying current of what Dick was saying earlier about, about him being tired of, of all these different things, right? Um, and so uh, then the dreamscape changes. And now we're in a, a uh, cemetery because the destiny is, is still calling the shots here, even though uh, Dick is, is exuding or yeah, exuding some control. Um, I, what I found interesting in this, you know, cause, uh, destiny is saying you're, you're going to lose them someday. They're going to die and you know, it's your fault, blah, blah, blah. But what's interesting here is that on, on the gravestones are the names on the gravestones. Uh, there's Starfire, Damien Wayne, Wally West, Batman. So even though this is, this is Dick Grayson's, uh, dreamscape, two people go, are, are the, the code names of those two people are on the gravestones, not Bruce Wayne, not Coriander. But Starfire and Batman, which I again doesn't make sense, but it is dream logic. It just doesn't make sense, but anyway, it's still fun, you know. It's comics. Uh, so now Destiny and Dick Grayson are actually fighting each other, and uh, again Superman comes to the rescue, which you know I guess is par for the course. He, he's Superman. That's that's what he does. So he says, "Do you remember earlier when you said you weren't sure how this alternate universe stuff worked?" I, well, I have a theory. See, there's infinite versions of this world. Every possibility exists somewhere. So there's your DC multiverse, right? The best case scenario always happens somewhere. The beautiful thing is each of us gets to access those other worlds just by closing our eyes. Everyone gets to see the people we've lost every time we dream, which is a little bit different than the whole multiversal theory. But anyway, he implores Dick to close his eyes. And then who shows up? It is Tim Drake, Red Robin, in that ridiculous Red Robin outfit, which is Robin with two R's on the on the chest for his his uh, signature. Anyway, and the New Fifty Two version of Superman who says, "Hey, Red," 
which I, I guess is a, a reference to either the fact when he was Robin when he wore the red vest or when uh, the New 52 version of Nightwing first appeared, he was wearing he was in the black and red instead of the, the familiar black and blue that he's in now. So they show up and immediately Dick uh, is less despondent and and um, sad, I'll say. He's smiling. He's smiling again. And he runs over to, to his two friends. Um, and, and, and we're, we're getting the voiceover of, of the, the rebirth Superman saying, uh, that's what I was trying to tell you, Dick. If there's, if they're always there somewhere, you never have to say goodbye. So, you know, there's, that's kind of an old, I'm going to almost say cliched bit of, of dialogue or that idea you know, we we never truly lose the ones we love because they're always in our heart type of thing, type of speech. But, you know, it's still uh, even Do- even Destiny says, what a lovely sentiment. <laughs> I'm touched in my non-decayed parts. Really? <laughs> so a nice little bit of humor in there um, for Mr. Seeley. Uh, anyway. So Destiny says it'll take more than a few friends to save you. And then Dick says, still smiling. Lucky for me, then, that you're right. I have a lot of friends. And this is where we get this great splash page of of Dick standing there in the forefront. And all these characters are behind him. The Supermans, uh, Tim Drake, uh, Batman's at the top, Batwoman, Robin, uh, Red Hood, Starfire, Raven, Wonder Woman, Green, two Green Lanterns. Um, some of the Titans are there. Batgirl, uh, Hawk and Dove, which I love to see Hawk and Dove. Helena Bertinelli, but there are there's a few here that I'm like, what? When when did when would when did Dick befriend these people? What I think is John Constantine is in the background there. Um, who else? Uh, when has he ever met or interacted with Firestorm or Supergirl or si- the Simon Baz Green Lantern for that matter? Anyway, uh, I'm nitpicking now, but oh, and Harley Quinn is back there. So these are supposed to be friends. When when did Harley and Dick Grayson become friends? Exactly. Anyway, I think mostly maybe the artist just kind of threw in some of the char- back characters and others that um, in the past maybe Dick has become friends with, or maybe even the the multiversal aspect is le- leaching or leaking into this dreamscape, to where if if Dick had friendships with some of these characters before the new 52 those are kind of like i said leaking into this i don't know like i said it's comics it's fun to to think about those possibilities um anyway so tim provides uh, a means or uh, yeah a means to defeat dr destiny and so dick dives into (laughs) dr destiny's chest cavity where that that red glowy thing is and that somehow breaks the spell, as it were. And so uh, we come to find out that Dr. Destiny has been um, kind of duped by uh, the cro- Cobra, by Cobra. So it says, uh, we find out from Cyborg, who showed up to help out in the real world now. We're back in the real world. Cobra was using Dr. Destiny's residual powers to steal information from Nightwing's mind, promising to restore him, Dr. Destiny, with the Dreamstone. Batman says, huh, Lady Eve's revenge on Nightwing for his recent campaign against them. And and there's a little asterisk uh, with an editor's note below. It says, check out Nightwing Volume 1, better than Batman. Batman says, they almost had their cake and ate it too, but you stopped them cold. Good work. Uh, with Superman in the background smiling. And Batman says, hmm. Thank you, Superman, <laughs> which is more, almost more interaction than I've seen in uh, the, like the Superman book or the Justice League books. And they kind of hint at the, the whole idea of uh, the rebirth Superman and New 52 Batman not quite getting along yet, not quite trusting, well, Batman not trusting the Superman. And that's fine. I just wish they would do a little bit more uh, in those books where, where those two characters interact. And so I thought it was nice that at least Batman acknowledged uh, how Superman helped his protege. Uh, Nightwing to Superman says, I think that was almost an acknowledgement. Superman says, ha, I got the Nightwing bump. (laughs) 
made me, it makes me laugh every time I read that. And Nightwing says, the what? Superman says, You're, you, vouching for someone is worth its weight in gold. It was true in my world, and it's true in this one. In fact, of everyone I've met here, you're the least changed from the version I knew. Always confident, always kind, always cool. Dick Grayson, the multiversal constant. And you cannot, well, maybe you can. That pleases me, pleases me to no end that someone in universe uh, acknowledges the importance of Dick Grayson to that universe. Especially since the last several years, you know, there's, there's uh, the, what's his name? Um, Dan DiDio you know, famously wanted to kill off Nightwing for, for quite a while there. And in, in a way they did, you know, with him, you know, quote unquote, dying and then becoming a secret agent. But uh, I just, I, I like, I like the fact that they acknowledge this. They, this, this is a, this is a, a, an idea that came up in one of the, um, one of the, I think towards the end of the, the Brave and the Bold run that they did where Dick Grayson Basically, in an effort to save a bunch of superheroes, simply asks them to go to, I think it's, I always forget that, Nanja Parbat. I, I know I'm saying that wrong. Oh, hell, I don't, don't remember. Anyway, skip that. <laughs> I should have pulled out that issue and looked at it before I started talking about it. Anyway, um, anyway, he, Nanda, Nanda Parbat, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, I, I think that's it. But anyway, uh, uh, he basically asks all these superheroes to go there in a, as a ruse to save them, but they did it unquestioningly. They simply trusted Dick Grayson because of their his relationship to them. And so that comes back again here in this story, and I'm, I'm, I'm just very pleased to see that again here. But more importantly, having been said by Superman. Um, uh, in the end, uh, Superman offers Dick Grayson a ride, uh, you know, flying. And he says, now nah, I'll, I'll catch a bat plane, but I appreciate the offer Clark. So he finally acknowledges, you know, that, that they are now friends, which again, I'm, I'm very pleased about. Uh, anyway, so, uh, the issue ends with, with Dick Grayson's telling Dick Grayson telling Batman that he's going to stick around to basically, or no, not stick around. He's, he's going, he wants to take a slight detour in, uh, in Bloodhaven. And so that sets up what I believe is coming in issue number 10, which is Nightwing in Bloodhaven, going back to that that concept. Uh, but, you know, if you have to repeat certain elements of the previous setup of the DC universe and what has been going on in the New 52 slash Rebirth universe, uh, this is a nice way to set it up as opposed to just, oh, I'm I'm Nightwing and... I'm not have a good. I've not had not been having a good time, so therefore I'm going to go uh, rediscover myself in this new town, which is kind of how they set it up, you know, pre Flashpoint when he went to Bloodhaven, as as I recall. But anyway, I love this issue. I, I obviously because I've I've spent you know many minutes here now. I don't remember. I don't know how many it is by the time I edit this, but uh, a lot of time just talking about this one issue, um, just because I enjoyed it so much. It's not the you know, not the best written. It's not the best art, although, you know, it's, I really enjoyed it, um, better than some of the other stuff that, uh, art wise has been in the Nightwing book. Um, and I like, uh, in general, I like, um, uh, Takara's, Takara's art. Uh, I think that's who is on the next arc, the Bloodhaven arc that's coming. But, um, anytime, any issue, especially, or anytime a story in DC Comics that that makes Dick Grayson or shows Dick Grayson to be this really cool character within the universe and just a really cool character in general. I I just I'm pleased as punch that that they did this issue. So I I want to thank everybody involved with this issue because I, I I absolutely loved it and I, I hope you did too. And and if you haven't read it and and even though I've spoiled the whole darn thing. <laughs> You know, maybe it's it's enticed you enough to go perhaps pick it up or uh, pick up the trade that this will eventually be in, um, and 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 read it for yourself, and you can decide. So, anyway, that's so that's my look at uh, Nightwing number nine. I hope you enjoyed this. I I certainly did.
this character especially has ha- has been a, a large part of my life for for decades now and uh, i don't know I, I i love this guy dick grayson like almost like i like or love uh <laughs> some actual people <laughs> and so that sounds ridiculous right but you know that's the power of of comic books that's the power of storytelling that you can you can feel that way about uh, an unreal character an un- an unreal person so I guess I'll leave it at that. That's as that's as profound as I can get, I think. And besides, my my voice is really starting to to hurt me, so I should I should stop talking now. Anyway, I hope you had a great. Uh, for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I certainly did. I I got to spend time. Uh, we had an early Thanksgiving, pre Thanksgiving, with my dad, and then went down to visit my daughter and her husband, and had Thanksgiving with his family. We had a great time. And of course, next up is is uh, Christmas and everything that goes with that. I'm looking forward to seeing my family and spending time with them and also chatting with some people really soon about some great comic books. So I hope you uh, come back and uh, listen to those episodes and feel free to, while you're at it, if you haven't, uh, take a look at my back catalog. You can find all this stuff uh, all the episodes at longboxreview.com. And if you uh, want to provide me with some feedback about Nightwing number nine or my thoughts about this issue, you can certainly do so by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at longboxreview. And I very much appreciate you uh, listening, listening, and um, I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye, guys.